Google, everyone thinks, runs with a degree of chaos. And Google actually acknowledges this. And they, they call it a creative chaos. Some people think it's just a plain old chaos. But I did find that there is a coherence in the things they do. There, there is a core of uh, the, this behind all their products, even though sometimes they throw us for a loop. They come out with something, when, when Gmail first came out, people thought, well, that's strange. This is a search company. What are they doing with, with a mail uh, product there? And when the browser came out, people questioned that. Uh, what, why are you doing that? And more recently, they, uh, we learned that they were working on cars that drive themselves, aut autonomous cars. And what does that have to do with the things that we think of as Google? Yet I found the thread going through all of that. So what, what's Google at its core? Uh, it's a technology company. It's um, uh, an artificial intelligence <coughs> company. It's an internet company. And all those things work together in their, their main products there. So the, the car thing, for instance, is an information processor. It, it very much is in theme with Google's mission, which is interpreted very, very broadly to access and organize all the world's information. And if you understand how those cars work, they are information processors. They go drive around and just suck in a lot of information uh, about the world around them. But even before the car itself took the wheel, quite literally, it, it sat there and observed how the drivers Google's drivers actually drove the car. For, so the first step was driving the car a lot. And the car sort of watched and learned. And that turns out to be the way the search engine watches and, and learns. Now, we all know, or a lot of us know, about PageRank, which is what the Viking and the cow explained to me in 1999. And that was Google's first big breakthrough, right? Uh, that enabled them to search better than anyone else. And they did that because, unlike the search engines of the, of the time, uh, that were competing with Google in 1998 and 1999, Google took uh, advantage of all the links in the World Wide Web, and, and they knew that a site was much more important if other important sites uh, linked to it. So the big breakthrough that Larry Page did, and he named his thing PageRank after himself, not the pages of the web, was that he was able to capture the entire web, which was uh, quite a stretch for Stanford University's computers at the time, but his instructors let him, uh, let him do that and let him uh, get access to, to a lot of the computers they had on campus. And then to sort of analyze, go backwards through the web, take a random walk through the web and, and look where all the links went and figure out in this one mathematical process which places were important and they used that information almost as a way to exploit the, the wisdom of crowds on the web to come up with what was important. And there was a lot of talk about that, and they were fairly open about that, though not exactly how the algorithms worked, uh, in the, their early days. And everyone sort of associated search with PageRank in, in, in the early days. But what I learned, spending a lot of time with the search engineers, was that PageRank was a, a decreasingly important element in search. And what was an increasingly important element was this artificial intelligence uh, that came from the search engine learning in the same way the cars learn about drivers and watching them drive, the search engine learned about the world by watching how people interacted with the search engine. For instance, if people would type in uh, dogs and then you know, they would get results and they wouldn't like the results and they would then type in puppies, the search engine figured, aha, here's a synonym. Dogs mean the same thing as puppies. So it would be able to deliver you a page uh, that had puppies in it if you just search for dogs. And likewise, if you typed in hot and then later typed in boiling, if you didn't get a result you wanted, it would figure these two words are, are sort of connected there. Then, of course, they had to deal with the problem of, you know, when, when, when the search engine, and this actually happened, sort of mis mistake the hot dog for a boiling puppy. Uh, and, and so they, they actually tackled that problem by some sophisticated uh, uh, con con contextual, you know, uh, breakups and, you know, uh, and algorithms that took that in, in, into context there. So, you know, and you see that sort of approach time and time again at Google. That's the way Google learns languages. Uh, they feed, feed a huge amounts of data into uh, their language product. Uh, they got this corpus of information of translated documents from the UN and other places and was able to figure out uh, by like, like learning this and, and, and interpreting that data how Translation worked. So Google is capable of making translations from one language to another when no engineer working at Google would know either of those languages there. So it, it really is an AI company. And I went back 
doing this book to some of my very early interviews with Sergey and Larry when I was at, at Newsweek and was surprised to the degree that they were talking about artificial intelligence even then. And at one point, Larry even mentioned uh, implants that, you know, that not only would Google uh, be intelligent, but you'd have an implant which would be, be able to feed it to you uh, right away. Uh, and, uh, and now they're fulfilling some of the dreams that Larry and Sergey told to me earlier. One buzzword around Google now is a word, is a, is a phrase called zero query search. And that means, as it sounds, that Google wants to deliver search results to you without your asking anything. Right now they're halfway there, right? They have this thing called instant search, which figures out what, what you're searching for as you just start typing. Even if there's one letter, uh, it, it'll start su suggesting things and giving you search results for, for, for that letter there. So you're getting closer and closer and closer to the zero query search there. And this stuff is a little scary. And the, the end of, the, of the, the first chapter, I asked uh, Udi Mamber, who was now the, the head of Google Search, uh, you know, saying, well, Google now is in the position of providing answers to these questions. It's the dominant search engine in the world. Most people, when they search, the, overwhelmingly will, will search by Google. Doesn't that make you nervous? Isn't that a great responsibility? And he said, this may surprise you, but it scares the hell out of me.